Hello Mango fans and Mango. Super Smash Bros. Melee for the Nintendo GameCube and RuneScape were both released in 2001, so I've always felt that they've had a spiritual connection. Having played both games for my entire life, I'm very much looking forward to watching the Lumbridge Moguls crush Group Iron Man. In this video, you'll learn an early game plan that will set you up to beat the competition, and will turn you into a Giga Chad as fast as possible while skipping the boring grind. You'll also learn the hidden technique known as the Mango. I'm Wee Skill now, a 20 year RuneScape veteran. I'm a doc kid to Melee, starting to play competitively in 2013. So Mango has been a hero of mine for a long time. My goal is to create a beginner OSRS guide that any dual spacey main could appreciate but to also keep it short and sweet. There will also be enough information in this video to get you well on your way even if you've never touched the game before. So let's get started. The first section of this video is about using optimal settings. I'll keep it short, but if you'd like to skip this, go to the timestamp on the screen. This is the desktop of my computer. First off, I'd like you to download RuneLite. Go to runelite.net and click the download button here. This is a client that'll make the game way better to play. Once you have RuneLite, open it up. It'll take a second to load, then it'll look exactly like the regular RuneScape client. Before you log in, click the wrench in the top right corner and type GPU into the search bar. Make this orange. Click it and turn it on. Then click the gear and copy these settings. Now one last thing before we log in, go to the official old school RuneScape website. I'm just gonna zoom in on the website so we can see. Click enable authenticator. Can you see my mouse? It's on the bottom here. Log in here using your account and enable the authenticator. This is super important for later on. We're not just doing this for account security, but rather because it's an easy way to get early money quickly. Now, log into your account on RuneLite. If you haven't beaten the tutorial yet, do so. The tutorial's pretty long, but to get through it as quickly as possible without having to read anything, if you see an arrow flashing on the minimap, run to it. Click the minimap toward that arrow. If you see an icon flashing on one of these stones, click that, and that'll get you through the tutorial quickly. Once you've made it through the tutorial, you've made it into Lumbridge, and here we are. Now I want you to find the wrench icon on my screen, it's right here, and there are three panels in this. Click the first panel, it looks like a gear. Change your player attack options to hidden. Change your NPC attack options to left click where available. Now go to the third tab. It looks like a monitor. Choose the best game client layout for you. Now this matters for a streamer in a big way. You can either choose to use fixed classic layout, that's what this looks like right now, or you can do resizable classic layout. And that looks like this. A lot of amateur RuneScape streamers will use their giant monitor and they'll play in full screen. That'll make all the UI elements look really, really tiny and not fun to look at on stream at all. Your inventory is too tiny, the world map's too tiny, the words are too tiny, and they're probably too small for your eyes too. That's why I prefer looking at this on my actual desktop to literally play the game in a smaller sized window, uh, especially when streaming. <coughs> One more thing about streaming, if you're using classic layout like this, I suggest you putting your webcam up in the top right, covering up the minimap and that's okay, but consider you know, moving this over so you can still see your HP and uh, prayer points. Those are pretty important. And another great option would be putting your webcam down here. I think the Mango uh, free-floating free webcam would look pretty good down here in the resizable client mode. But that's all up to you. You're totally okay to do whatever you want. One more thing in settings, click all settings. It's the big button at the bottom. Go to controls. Make sure that shift click to drop items is turned on. Make sure middle mouse buttons controls the camera is on. Scroll all the way down and then turn on escape closes the current interface. That makes it so that if you press the escape key, It'll close whatever you're looking at. Let's play the game. The first step in the Mango path is to do the Stronghold of Security. The reason to do this first is because it gives you 10,000 GP right away. That's a lot of money for a low-level account. Now, you have to have your Authenticator enabled on your account in order to do this. So if you skip the first section of this video, go back and check that out. To do the Stronghold, you need to walk to Barbarian Village. You can open up a world map by clicking the go north, north, north. Barbarian Village is right here. Now there's a lot of icons, so that looks kind of confusing, but if you follow my cursor, here's the path. You're gonna cut through these trees. You can fit right through here, and then end up in Barbarian Village. I'll go there right now. Life is this crazy, mystical thing, and sometimes you just go out like a buster, and there's nothing you can do about it.
Ready? I miss the old mango, straight from the gold Go. mango. The best Go. Go. Old mango. Read all the rose mango. I hate the new mango. The chew and lose mango. Buster and cruise mango. Drink all the booze mango. I miss the sweet mango. We shine and peach mango. I gotta say, at that time I'd like to meet mango. See, he invented mangoes. It wasn't any mangoes. And I would look and look around and there's so many mangoes. I used to love mango. I used to love mango. It's funny how I can be considered the greatest of all time, but also at equally at the same time be the biggest buster of all time, all the time. Like how does that make sense, you know? And now that you've made it to Barbarian Village, climb down this entrance, there's a hole in the middle of the rocks here, and you're in the dungeon at this point. You're not allowed to use the portal, so you have to walk through all of these doors. The doors are each going to ask you a question about account security. If you don't want to pay very much attention to it, sometimes they'll let you through randomly without asking a question. That happened on that first door for me, so let me go through a second one to show you what it's like. Okay, never mind, I don't know. It, it might just not ask me questions anymore since I've beaten this dungeon already. Anyway, to make it through this dungeon, go to your world map again and look for the shortest path through the dungeon. For this one, just stick north, go through these doors, and end up in the main room. There will be a chest or something to loot in the middle of the floor, and then go down a ladder. Go down the second floor, make it to this grain of plenty. Uh, you know, you could go down this right side and make it through these doors. Loot whatever's there, and then go down the ladder again. You're on the green floor. Uh, every time you go down a ladder, the monsters around you will get stronger and stronger. So if you could have a bunch of people from chat run around you to protect you, that would help a lot. If you go in with your entire group, that'll also increase your chances of surviving. For this green floor, by the way, I would recommend going through these doors, through here, up, and around and in. Now there is a fourth floor, but you don't have to go down here. You won't get any money for going down here. Since you don't have to do the bottom floor, since you won't get any money out of it, uh, just climb up the ladder to get out of the dungeon. And you'll be out in Barbarian Village again, but you'll have 10,000 GP in your inventory. Now it's time to run east to Varrock. Varrock's one of the main cities in RuneScape. You've completed number one. Now, number two, we're going to be doing the Waterfall Quest. The reason you want to do Waterfall Quest is, is that it's going to train your attack and strength skills really high instantaneously. Now, there are some risks in doing Waterfall Quest where you might die really easily, but it's honestly worth the risk. And you don't really lose anything if you die. You'll just get sent back to Lumbridge and it might be annoying. I made it to the town square of Varrock. Let me show you on the world map where we are. See, here's the town. The goal is to go to this building right here. This is the magic shop. So I'm just going to keep running to the east bank. The east bank is the building right here on the screen. And now we'll run south. The magic shop is right below it. Trade this NPC to buy a good number of water, earth, and air runes. You need six of each of these for the quest, but in case you die, you don't ever want to come back here again. So a reasonable use of your money would be to buy an entire pack of each of these. They each contain 100 of the rune that uh, they have the same symbol of. But otherwise, you could just buy 50, you know, right-click this, buy 50, right-click this, buy 50 airs, and buy 50 earth. Once you have those runes in your inventory, run north to the bank, and you're going to deposit absolutely everything that you have into your bank. A good way to do that is by clicking this button right here. It's a deposit inventory button. Now, the reason that we bought those runes is because they're a requirement for Waterfall Quest. To do Waterfall Quest, I want you to go over to YouTube and type in Slayer Music. Slayer Music is spelled with a Q at the end. Uh, his account is Slayer Music 1. Do Slayer Music Waterfall Quest to get to this video. This is a quick guide video, it's only 8 minutes long, and it'll bring you through the entire quest, and it'll make sure that you're able to do it even at the low level that you are. Now notice when you start the video... Hi, and welcome to my quick guide of the quest Waterfall. Scrolling back to the beginning of the video, he already has the items that you need to complete the quest in his inventory, and some of them are optional. He'll go through every single item that you need, but we're going to need to get this rope. You have these runes, 
and we're going to need to get you some food as well. So watching guides on YouTube to do quests is going to be really, really helpful for you uh, to do any quest that you want, but you're going to need a little bit of help getting the items. So that's why I'm getting you set up with the items for this quest in this video right now. In order to get rope and food, you need to navigate the menus on your UI here. Click the two smiling faces, click the red star in the fourth tab, click this drop down menu, and click Castle Wars. Click the teleport button in the bottom right. This is fast travel that everyone gets unlocked with uh, immediately when they start the game. Castle Wars is gonna teleport you super far west and that'll be really helpful because our goal is, as I click the world map, is to go to the city of Ardoon right here. This is our goal. So to do that, we're going to run north through here and squeeze through this gap here and we'll make it into Ardi. Doing the waterfall quest is one of your first activities in RuneScape. It saves a ton of time because it pops you up all the way to like level 30-ish attack and strength. It doesn't give you any defense experience, but it kind of turns your account into a glass cannon type of account. You know, you, you can get the defense later and it'll help, but it's not super important, okay? We're just trying to kill other people before they can kill us. That's the mango. Now that we've made it to Ardune, there's two tasks that we need to accomplish. Getting rope and getting food. The rope is in this general store. Trade the NPC and buy a rope from right here. It costs 23 coins. You don't need to go to the bank to get your money because we're about to train your thieving actually. To train thieving you need to find a man or woman NPC. You can thieve them at level one thieving. And I accidentally walked to the wrong house. But go to this house. It's got a little tiny picture of a dog in it. Climb the ladder up. Go through here. Open this door. And there just happens to be a man right here. Right click and pickpocket him uh, as many times as you can. The goal is to get your thieving level to level 5. If you run low on health, don't keep pickpocketing because he is able to kill you. Hopefully you have enough health to get to level 5 thieving without needing food. But if you do need food, go back to your bank, grab the bread, grab the shrimp that you spawned with. And I'm sorry I didn't tell you to get that earlier. <laughs> Notice that you get little brown bags. Uh, to open them up, you have to click them and it'll result in getting a little bit of money in your inventory. Uh, you will get more than enough coins to afford a rope by the time you're done with this. So let's say that you just got done with level 5 thieving, come back, go down the ladder, buy the rope. There we go. We now have most of the items that are required to do this quest. But now that we have level 5 thieving, we're going to go get the rest of our food. Go into the Arty Town Square, and there's a bread stall that we're going to get food from. This is an incredible source of food for low-level players. The best way to do this is not by pickpocketing or, or stealing from it while our player is in the main area. Because if you do that, a guard will see you and attack you and kill you. To safely do this, walk around to the back and you have to right click the ground that the baker is standing on and walk, click walk here to stand underneath the baker. Now. There's another player standing here and, and stealing these foods so you can see them disappearing. So all you need to do is spam click right here so that your character doesn't walk away while you're trying to thieve. So you can spam click and literally not pay attention and you'll get an inventory full of food. There's a few different types of food that you can get from this stall. You're mainly looking to get cake. By the way, speaking of dropping, let's say that you get a lot of pieces of chocolate cake and you want to get rid of them fast. Hold the shift key down and just click whatever you want to drop and that's, that'll drop things quickly. All right, let's say that you've got a few cake, you've got rope, you've got the runes. We can go back to the YouTube video that we're watching and notice that he has a rope, the runes, and food and we're ready to start the quest. Do exactly what he says and you'll be able to beat the waterfall quest. Then you can finish off this video afterwards. All right, guys, I'm just going to trust that you just did Waterfall Quest, and congratulations. I hope it was exhilarating, and I hope that you have awesome combat stats at this point. Now I'm going to finish up this video with some tips and tricks in case you've never played RuneScape before. I am just personally going to go to Lumbridge in order to uh, explain this uh, as easily as possible. One of the easiest banks to access is in Lumbridge Castle. Run over here to the southwest corner, climb up the stairs, 
you actually have to right click these stairs and there's a climb up and a climb down option. Climb them up again to get to the top floor of the castle. There's a bank up here and you can access all of your stuff that you put in the bank earlier. I want you to get out the regular bow that you have and whatever arrows you have, you probably spawn with like 25 bronze arrows or something. And now that you have these, we're gonna learn about safe spotting. Equip the bow and equip the arrows and go somewhere where there's a fence. One of the most common places people go to is in the northeast here. There's a cow pen and there's a fence also. Actually, let's just do it right here. There's a bunch of goblins. Uh, to save spot, you just need to have an obstacle in front of you and you're actually able to shoot over obstacles in this game. So if I attack this goblin, he can't fight back and you're 100% safe while shooting things. So that makes range pretty powerful in this game. Uh, the same goes for uh, magic. So you'll have access to level one wind strike. I just happen to have uh, other spell runes here. So I'm gonna use uh, fire bolts on this goblin and just put it right over the fence. They can't fight back. So that's how you save spot. You'll be able to use that to train your range and mage. Speaking of training mage, if you make sure you get all of your mind runes and all of your air runes out of the bank and uh, bring them in your inventory to this spot right here, just north of the castle, there's a magic combat tutor. Drop any air runes and any mind runes that you have on the floor. Uh, no one can see them instantaneously, so it's okay and it's safe to put them on the ground, uh, it, as long as you're going to pick them up somewhat quickly. Right click and claim from the magic combat tutor. She'll give you 30 air runes and 30 mind runes for free. That's really good for you as an early level uh, so that you can train your magic uh, quickly and you don't have to spend money to do it. And so when you're behind a fence, you can actually uh, double laser. And uh, that's the mango. Now to wrap this video up as a final tip on your adventure in RuneScape, Ludwig is going to be running his mouth a lot. Mango, I want you to be constantly looking for ways to be using your time effectively. Always be running around and uh, collecting experience as fast as possible. So if you guys are standing around in Lumbridge, don't just stand here. Look, there's a man right here that you can pickpock and pickpocket it and train your thieving. There's a rat right here that you can attack and gain combat experience. You might spawn with an axe and a tinderbox in your inventory, and there's trees here that you can chop and burn logs. You can gain experience faster than everyone else, making yourself cooler, stronger than everyone else, faster. That's just how to use your time effectively. Always be doing something. Keep bringing in that XP, baby. That's the mango. Now, just one last thing. Uh, if you go into your quest tab, it's this symbol right here on the blue tab. All of these words are going to be read. Every single one of these is a story and a quest. Uh, quests are really good to progress your account. In order to do quests, literally search the name of the quest and Slayer Music on YouTube and he'll give you a walk-along guide to be able to do the quest quickly and easily. That's the best way to do quests, even though they're still going to take a decent amount of time and maybe be pretty tough. That's it, everybody. Enjoy the game. I hope you guys have a great time. I'll totally be uh, there in chat, in Ludwig's chat, in Mango's chat, in Atriox's chat, uh, checking you guys out, playing Group Iron Man. Gonna have a great time. By the way, I stream Old School RuneScape myself, so if you're new to the game and you have any questions, Feel free to swing on by, ask any questions, that's A-OK. -okay. I'll post more guides on my YouTube channel, so please subscribe. I hope you guys enjoy Group Iron Man, and if you decide to play other game modes in RuneScape, enjoy those too. Alright, have a good day everybody, bye bye